Hi, all right, I've had so many damn complaints about that I didn't uh, test the voice arbitrary capability of this Rigold DG4162. Fine, here it is, I'll do a quick video. Jeez, hope it keeps everyone happy. All right, if you didn't know, in the ARB capability here, if you go into ARB and then you go into select waveform, it's one of the built-in waveforms. So built-in, there's a whole bunch of them, but it's in the engine one go figure it's one of these ones over here and you can see the little dot it's in there with you know butterworth and uh Chebyshev and all that sort of stuff so let's go into voice and you've got to um look check this out right there's a select thing here on the second menu but it's not on all the men it's not on that menu so like it's just it's stupid really so you've got to like um you know press enter over here to select it, which is part of this menu, uh, which is part of this numeric keypad here. It's just, it's just stupid. I don't know. It, it doesn't seem to make sense. Anyway, getting into a mini review rant here, but there it is. Select voice. Let's go back. And there's the waveform. Um, that's pretty much exactly what it looks like. So it looks like there's two syllables there at least, and uh, I, I originally had it at one kilohertz, I just played it, and well, I just looked at it on the scope uh, first, and of course it was massively too fast. It was just, you know, it was repeating every, you know, every millisecond or something, so it was just uh, crazy. So I've had to lower it down to two hertz here. Okay, five volts peak to peak output. I've got it hooked up to my speaker here. Yes, it can drive an eight ohm speaker directly, so let's give it a go. Here we go. I found two hertz is roughly the, uh, optimal spot. Here we go. I'll put my mic up to it. There you go. That's clearly saying Rigol or Rigol, you know. I I pronounce it Rigol, but uh Rigol, it's the voice is clearly saying Rigol, Rigol, Rigol. And I haven't figured out how to uh, extend that um, like actually extend the pause between each one. Um, not even sure if it's possible. You might have to just go in and edit the um, arbitrary uh, waveform itself to actually do that because it is annoying. It actually repeats too quickly. But there you go. It's saying Rigol, I'm pretty sure. Now there's one annoying aspect with this is that um, the frequency selection, you'll notice that it's highlighted green there when you know you press frequency or you press amplitude, it highlights the other one, not sure how good that looks on camera, but it looks good in real life. And uh, you want to adjust the frequency. Um, fine, okay, but look at which digit you're adjusting. There's that tiny little, once again, that stupid little yellow dot in there like they had for the waveform selection. I don't know what idiot thought that that was a good selection idea. And of course, if you um, move, and if you use the buttons over here under the knob, it sure enough, it selects which digit you want, but look, it's just, it, it's tiny, that little yellow dot. So if I want to adjust, you know, in 100 millihertz increments, there you go, that's fine. But uh, yeah, it's just, oh man, it's just retarded, really. That's a horrible feature. I just, that tiny dot, why not just, you know, make it a different color, highlight it red or, you know, something like that. I don't know, anything but that silly yellow dot. And we'll play with the frequency just a little bit. So there you go. I think the, you know, the optimum spots maybe you know 2.2, 2.3 hertz or something like that. And I'll try and edit that waveform to add in an extra pause after that. So let's go down to edit waveform here. I haven't tried this before, so. Uh, cycle period. Ah, here we go. So let's change the uh, let's change the cycle period, shall we? 
let's increase that to you know a couple of seconds and let's try that so how do we save there we go once again you've got to go down to another menu so let's save it oh here we go we're saving it to the internal memory let's save it to how do you jump across oh man trying to use this thing oh, there we go it's obvious browser and we're in the directory thing we need to go to file there and once again we've got a little stupid blue dot this time crazy okay let's save it in oh that's very laggy oh no there we go all right save i'm going to save it to arb1 oh file name geez do we care let's just call it one hello i'm pressing ah oh, see the enter button over there doesn't work i've got to use the select button let's just call it that that'll do saving arb wave data bang we're in okay so now we should be able to recall this with a let's have a look down here select waveform save stored waveforms there we go and then we can go in here to select the file uh, read bang I assume uh, data have been changed okay beautiful now it should output no all right no that's no good we're obviously no we extended the whole thing clearly that's no good and for those who are curious to see the actual waveform well we'll single shot capture that and we'll zoom in and there there is your waveform it's very uh it's very stepped of course it's like it's uh it's like it's not even 8-bit it's very very coarse look at that extremely coarse what is that you know six bits or something it's uh it's pretty terrible it seems like they've just used some you know computer crap computer generated voice to generate you know a a crude uh wave file and then stick it in there as one of the arbitrary waveforms they didn't even bother like sampling a real human voice in high fidelity which this thing's capable of what is it uh, 14 bits um you know dac in the thing it's capable of you know extremely good voice reproduction and a quick one for those who want to see the hardware uh counter capability so you switch on the hardware counter which is weird to have a hardware frequency counter on a uh, on a function gen like this so i've just got my scope probe hooked up to the back um input and let's have a look and there we go bang it's um clearly got a um it clearly automatically um selects a reciprocal uh counting function because it gives you the you know the huge number of decimal places the huge resolution on low frequencies like that so it's doing reciprocal frequency counting uh you you know on some older um uh, well a lot of older frequency counters um you they either didn't have this capability at all or uh you had to manually select it but it's clearly automatically uh knows that it's a low frequency bang i need to use reciprocal counting so there you go and there's it measuring a one kilohertz one volt uh peak to peak sine wave from my um agilent 3000 series uh built-in waveform generator and let me uh drop that frequency down a tad actually i completely take that back i think it's absolute uh bullshit because <laughs> this reciprocal i don't think it's using reciprocal counting at all um it seemed to work okay at 50 hertz seemed to be doing the business with a bit of noise but i just i'm generating now um 18 let's say 20 hertz on my uh rigol uh, sorry my agilent uh waveform gen one volt peak to peak 20 hertz and it's just jumping all over the place and it wouldn't do that if it was a true reciprocal uh frequency counter and if i drop it lower in if i drop it lower like 12 hertz it's completely stopped it's just completely stopped updating so obviously there is a lower 
frequency limit there and all those digits are just complete bullshit really it's not a true I assume it's not a true reciprocal frequency counter because if it was um, then you know it'd be easily able to do you know 10 Hertz or 1 Hertz just as easily as it can do 50 Hertz and of course you know it tries to do 20 Hertz and bang it's just it's just crap have to read the manual no there you go I flew off the handle I had to go in and change the gate time so you go into counter here and well you turn on the counter uh, where was it it was uh, gate time here and it didn't automatically adjust the gate time so now I'm feeding in my 24 Hertz signal and it's uh, it's rock solid so let's uh, turn it down to and it should update there we go all right much much better much much better I like it and I checked the manual and yes it uh, goes down to a uh, hundred microhertz or something like that it's you know it can go measure incredibly low uh, frequencies so yeah that was all uh, just a red herring auto here we go let's try auto and the auto function uh, didn't really work there so I'm not sure what that's doing got to read the manual again but uh, I was able I'm able to measure 100 millihertz no problems at all if I've got my uh, gate time set slow enough and there's the 50 Hertz from my finger updating once per second so there we go it's a bit better now than the uh, gate time we were using before